Hi, and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's Game of Thrones video on an analysis of Arya's Season 6 storyline. This video is where I break down Arya's Season 6 storyline from my perspective and clear up what I think are some common misconceptions about her storyline and explain why I liked it. So I'll have to start by giving a spoiler warning for Game of Thrones up to Season 6. If you haven't seen all of Season 6, you may not want to watch this video, otherwise some things may be spoiled for you. So the first thing one should keep in mind when analyzing a storyline from the show is to completely and totally disregard the books, as the show is its own separate thing. Although there are still many similarities between the two, when looking at the show, one must only look at the show. Therefore, evidence from the books are completely irrelevant. So that is one thing to bear in mind during this video. So Arya's Bravo storyline has got a lot of criticism as being boring, pointless or drawn out and saying uh, things like it being boring or too drawn out is a matter of opinion so I can't really fault anyone if they think that even if I don't personally agree. I would say that it is false to say that the, her Bravo storyline was pointless. In fact I heard one reviewer state that nothing has changed in her character since she came to Bravo's and that her entire storyline was totally pointless and I'm sorry but that is patently false. Go back and watch the first four seasons, particularly seasons three and four. Compare Arya's character to the way she is at the end of season six, and you should notice a huge difference. Huge. So that statement isn't only wrong, but utterly ridiculous. Before Arya left uh, for Bravos, she was a belligerent little girl who often would talk like she was this badass but could barely uh, back it up. It's true she did have a couple of kills to her names uh, before she left, such as killing the stable boy in Season 1, killing the random uh, Frey soldier in Season 3, and killing Pulliver and Rorge in Season 4. However, in each case, the victim in question was totally caught off guard. In fact, in the case of of the Frey soldier, she purposely tricked him by dropping a coin for him to pick up. And after she did this, she was dependent on the Hound to save her from the rest of the Frey men. And when she killed Pulliver, she literally stabbed him in the back. But whenever she outright challenged someone like Doris of Mir or the Hound, she would get her ass handed to her, and um, mostly was just all bark and no bite. Plus, she was a bit of a loudmouth little girl who let herself be ruled by her fiery uh, emotions and need for revenge. Now, compare that to where she was at the end of Season 6, as she no longer was loud and belligerent and whining about, I'm going to kick your ass. Instead, she managed to disguise herself among a troop of actors who could uh, have you know, and she could have easily killed her target that she wanted to, not to mention her killing of Marin Trant, which was pulled off with cool proficiency as she took advantage of his weakness and killed him in the most brutal way. In addition, she managed to defeat a skilled faceless assassin who are reportedly the best assassins in the world uh, that cost a fortune to hire by setting a trap for her and using her training in blight and fighting to kill her. And then she uh, used her new skills as a faceless assassin to infiltrate the twins and kill the three most important lords of that castle which would be next to impossible task for any normal assassin to accomplish proving that she is now a skilled faceless assassin but more than that her entire demeanor has changed as instead of being whiny and belligerent she's a lot more contemplative and cold and calculating uh, seeing the scenes with her and Lady Crane as she, uh, Lady Crane was caring for her you could see the massive change in her character as she's now much more calm, thinks things through rather than acting on instinct and being all fiery. So if you're saying her character hasn't really changed since she's gone to Bravos or that her entire perversely storyline was pointless, then you must be watching a different show than I am. That's the only explanation I can think of for such a statement. And as for her season six storyline being uh, boring, again, this is all a matter of opinion, so I can't say that opinion is wrong, only that I don't share it. I will say that I did prefer her season five storyline to her season six. Uh, that wasn't quite as interesting, although I did like the way it ended. 
Part of the reason why many didn't care for this storyline may have been because at this stage in the show, more so than any other storyline, it was more disconnected from everything else that was happening in the show, as it features a bunch of characters that are unknowns or not really relevant, as Arya is the only character that really counts. And I can certainly see that point of view, as that bothered me a little bit too. However, I do think her storyline this season was crucial for her personal story that does look like it will intersect with the main storyline from now on. So let's examine her season 6 storyline in more detail. It starts with a short uh, scene in episode 1 where she's a blind beggar on the streets of Bravos and then the wave comes up and kicks her ass with a stick and after she uh, leaves she says see you tomorrow. Then episode 2 we get another short scene where uh, once again Arya is a blind beggar on the streets and the wave comes up and kicks her ass with a stick. However at the end of the fight Jack and Hagar comes up to her and ask Arya who she is, and she replies, no one. And then Jacken offers her all sorts of things, from food to shelter, if only she'll say her name, but every time she insists that she is no one, and uh, then Jacken offers to take her back to the house of black and white. And then in episode three, we see Arya still blind, training uh, by fighting with the waif uh, with sticks, as the waif totally kicks her ass, and we get a nifty little montage where Arya is uh, putting something together with powders by smelling them, as the wife kicks her ass and then drills her about her list. At the end, Arya manages to block the wave's blow with her stick, and this apparently marks the sign that she's ready as Jackin appears, and then he asks Arya uh, to say her name and offers her her sight back if she does, but she still insists that she is no one. And then Jackin offers her a drink from the poison water fountain that we've seen uh, that kills people, but he insists if she is truly no one, she'll be okay. So she drinks the water Water and she regains her sight back. And then in episode 4, we see her training, uh, you know, fighting with sticks again with the waif. After the waif uh, kicks her ass, uh, she insists that she'll never be one of them and calls her Lady Stark. Uh, Jacken then says that she has a point, as the faceless men were typically made up of poor and the powerless and not lords. He then holds up the poison uh, to Arya, and Arya grabs it and simply asks who, thus agreeing to kill whoever it is he wants and Jacken tells her an actress whose name is Lady Crane and Arya agrees to this task. So let's have a look at these first four episodes. As uh, The common complaint is that it was very repetitive as we just kept seeing Arya getting her ass beat with sticks and it was getting old. While I do agree with that to an extent, I could see why it was done this way. As her season 5 storyline ended with her going blind, so they had to have some payoff to that. They couldn't just have her regain her sight in the very next episode, because then the whole thing would have been a waste. However, they didn't wait very long until they gave her a sight back, as it happened at the end of episode 3, and only after two very brief scenes in the first two episodes. But I think we can all agree that if they dragged this out any longer, it would have been really boring, so probably best that they had moved on early on. But more importantly, it was necessary for the progression of her character to show her go through such hardships, and more importantly, to show her resolve. As the reason uh, she had her sight taken away uh, and was thrown out into the streets in the first place was because she defied the faceless men and killed for her own purposes, thus illustrating that she was still Arya Stark. However, during this period, and um, instead of like getting up and running away or whining to Jack in or the waif uh, as her old self would do, she accepted her punishment and their beatdown and still insisted that she was no one, thus proving her resolve to become a faceless man, which was rewarded by Jack in, who gave her uh, her sight back and let her back into the house of black and white. So in other words, these scenes may have seemed repetitive, but they were totally necessary to tell her story. It's also interesting to note that the waif uh, still didn't believe she deserved to be a faceless man, while Jacken still thought she could but had his doubts. So then we move to episode 5 where we are introduced to uh, the Lady Crane and her acting troupe and I think it's no coincidence that the play uh, that she's in has personal implications for Arya. 
as uh, her target is an actress that plays Cersei Lannister, a person who is on Arya's kill list, and more importantly, the play is pro-Lannister propaganda that portrays her family in an inaccurate and negative way. So I have no doubt that she was purpose this was purposely done to test Arya to see if she can move beyond her past, which she actually does. However, the issue comes up when she's asked to kill without question as she reasoned out that she was was uh, hired by another actress who wanted Lady Crane dead because she was jealous of her and wanted her part. And Arya didn't believe uh, that she deserved to die for something like that. Uh, but when she brought it up with Jacken, he made it clear that it wasn't her place as a faceless man to question this, but simply to do as she was told. It's also worth noting that she asked uh, to use one of the faces, but Jacken refused, saying that she wasn't ready. So then in episode 6, uh, when she goes uh, to do the deed, uh, she does uh, poison Lady Crane's rum, uh, but she gets to know her and more importantly grows to like her. So although she did poison the rum, she changes her mind at the last second and knocks the rum out of her hand before she can drink it and warns Lady Crane to beware of the other actress that wants her dead. Her next action is to immediately recover her sword needle, which is the most important thing to Arya Stark, and then uh, she doesn't return to the House of Black and White, and instead we see her in a dark room lit by a single candle, which we later learn was a trap she was setting for the Waif. And we see that the Waif uh, witnessed Arya's act of mercy, which defied the faceless men, and then she goes to Jacken, uh, stating that she was promised that she could kill Arya if she messed up again, which she did, and Jacken agrees. So then in episode 7, we see Arya plotting to book a uh, boat back to Westeros, so it's obvious that she has now reclaimed her identity as Arya Stark and no longer thinks of herself as no one. And it's interesting to note that this realization didn't come after she killed Manor Trant, so it wasn't the desire for revenge, but the need to show mercy that made her realize that being a faceless assassin wasn't for her. So it has a double meaning that when Lady Crane asked her, uh, her name as she told her it was Mercy, which is what she showed her against the wishes of the faceless men. <laughs> So in other words, Arya still had morals and a sense of justice, which wouldn't let her just kill whoever she's told to kill like a faceless assassin. So here's where things get hairy, though, because next we see Arya uh, just nonchalantly roaming the city out in the open in broad daylight, which many, including myself, criticize as careless and idiotic, and indeed is met with bad results as an old lady approached her, and I can't believe how stupid Arya was to not instantly recognize that this old lady was the waif wearing a face, and then she was uh, viciously stabbed several times before slipping away in the water. So when questioned about this, the director of the episode mentioned that Arya is still a just a teenage girl and thus has a certain level of na naivete that some viewers forget about because of her portrayal as a badass. However, to me and many others, this level of incompetence is far beyond what can be explained away simply by her age and I do see this as bad writing. And in addition, how viciously she was stabbed by the way was also very poorly executed as this stab wound should have killed her especially when compared to other stab wounds on the show which did kill people so this scene was poorly written and poorly executed however that being said, it's obvious that the showrunner's intentions were to simply show Arya wasn't perfect and still made mistakes because she's still young. So that's the intention here even if it was poorly executed so we'll just go with it. So then in episode 8, we see her go to Lady Crane for help as she's uh, severely wounded and Lady Crane manages to patch her up and uh, Arya then recovers. So the passage of time being what it is on the show, we don't know exactly how much time Arya spent recuperating under Lady Crane's care. However, I think it's safe to assume it wouldn't be too long before the wave would catch up with her, so I would say several days at the most. 
But it is interesting that Arya uh, connects to Lady Crane during this time, and they have uh, a more caring moment with another person that she has ever had since she's left Gendry and Hot Pie behind. And again, you can see how much more cool and contemplative she is here as she talks about how uh, it would be cool to see what is west of Westeros. But of course, this nice moment doesn't last as the wave does catch up with them and kills Lady Crane, and then leads Arya on a chase through the streets of Bravos, which I personally loved and thought was an amazingly cinematically executed sequence that was really intense and had amazing payoff. Sure, it was unrealistic for Arya to be running around like that after being so viciously stabbed, but I had already gotten over the fact that they muddled up, you know, that stabbing in the previous episode and just moved on with it. The sequence did show Arya in a lot of pain, especially after her long jump and tumble, but we learn why she was so desperate to do a dangerous move like that because she was leading the waif back to her little cubby hole where she had set a trap for her by using uh, her overconfidence against her and led her into a dark room and then put the candle out leaving them both in darkness where Arya had the advantage because of her recent training of being blind. So next we see Jack in, in the Hall of Faces and he sees a lot of blood. He follows the trail to see the waif's face hanging on the wall and then Arya holds him at sword point and questions him about sending the waif to kill her. But Jack in, in his true form remains perfectly calm and calmly states that yes he did uh, send the waif to kill her but the waif is now dead and Arya isn't and he almost seems proud of this. He then tells her she is now truly no one to which Arya Arya replies, no she isn't, she is Arya Stark of Winterfell and she's going home. Now many have also criticized this scene claiming that Jacken was acting out of character, but I completely disagree and would assert that he is totally 100% in character and in fact he's in true Jack in form. At the end of the second season, um, when Jack in first offered for her to come to Bravos to train as a faceless man, he offered it uh, to her as a means to kill the remaining people on her list, not to become an assassin for hire. So, when she showed up in Season 5 and Jack insisted that she leave behind her identity and just couldn't kill anyone for her own purposes, I assumed this was an inconsistency in writing, but after seeing this episode, I don't think it was the case at all, and that Jack did ultimately have the intention of training her to become a faceless assassin, but to use those skills for her own purposes to finish her own kill list. The wave uh, simply wasn't on it. Uh, or in on it with Jack in and uh, you know was a final test for Arya. So when Arya proclaimed she was Arya Stark of Winterfell and going home, I think Jacken's reaction was one of a proud father, or more apt, a proud mentor, which was certainly how the actor played the scene, as I think this was his plan all along. And all of the training, her being blind and getting her ass kicked by the way on a regular basis, was all meant to toughen her up and make her a better killer, which it did. And her mission to kill Lady Crane went down exactly as Jacken knew it would, as it was actually the designed for Arya to realize who she was and reclaim her identity. I mean, do you think Jacken didn't know about how she hid Needle? No, of course he knew. He knew she was hanging on to her sense of identity as Arya and in fact wanted her to. And when he claimed she was no one, that was his way of telling her that she is now a faceless assassin ready to complete her task. And as for her sending the waif to kill her, the waif could have killed her and he would have been okay with that too as it's just, you know, the nature of things. But he had faith in Arya that she would come out on top just as she did. As if you look at uh, Jack and, and the Faceless Men, they have uh, that kind of simple, brutal mind thinking. You know, either it's meant to be or it isn't. And ultimately, uh, he completely succeeded in his original task that he stated in Season 2 that is turning her into an unstoppable badass assassin who is capable of completing her own kill list on her own. So I totally believe that this was his plan all along and it went down without a hitch. 
So the one criticism of this ending I can uh, kind of see where they're coming from is that this scenario is dependent on the Waif having a personal grudge against Arya, which uh, you know identifies her as an individual, whereas the season 5 ending was meant to illustrate that there are no individuals amongst the Faceless Men, as we saw uh, the man we thought of as Jack and Agar uh, poison himself and die where the person we thought was the Waif turned into Jack and Hagar. You know, I agree that this is a tad inconsistent to a degree. However, I think it's clear uh, where there are a bunch of nameless, faceless men uh, using Jack and's face, uh, so it's very likely that the person we saw on screen as Jack and is actually several different people at several different times all using the same face. Uh, it ultimately doesn't matter. Uh, there's actually clearly a waif that is a singular person who is the waif, which is illustrated by the fact that Arya ripped off her face and presented it in the Hall of Faces, proving that she has an actual face, that that's her actual face. So the waif was an individual who had a grudge and therefore wasn't privy to the Jackins plan. And I would say that's why uh, they were okay with Arya killing her, as she failed her own test by allowing herself to have a personal grudge against Arya, proving that she wasn't a true faceless man either. So ultimately, it all makes sense to me. So then we see Arya one last time in Season 6 in Episode 10, where she pops up at the twins to kill Black Walter and Lothar Frey and feed them to Walter Frey in pies before killing him as well. So we see she uses a face to accomplish this as she's disguised as a server girl, which proves she now has the full skills of a faceless assassin. Uh, so there's been a lot of debate on whether she's killed someone to steal that face or she stole uh, some faces from the hall before she left. Ultimately, I think it's not important and will likely not be answered in the show and ultimately I don't care. I think the whole point is she is now a faceless assassin and that's all we need to know. As there's obviously a certain level of magic in using faces that's required and Arya now obviously possesses that magic. Uh, what's interesting to note is how the server girl we later learned was Arya in disguise was eyeing up Jaime. Both he and Bronn interpret this as the girl having the hots for him, but in retrospect we learned she was eyeing him up as a potential kill. But her main focus was to get Walder Frey, who was on her list and Jaime wasn't. So that's who she went after first, and by the time she accomplished this, Jaime was gone and this uh, could have uh, interesting implications for the future. A future I firmly believe that her main goal will to be to kill the remaining people on her list, as although she proclaimed herself Arya Stark of Winterfell, I believe she did so to illustrate that she's going to kill for Arya Stark of Winterfell's purposes, not as an assassin for hire. And the decoration wasn't meant to imply she was returning to Winterfell, as the very dark look of satisfaction on Arya's face at the end of Season 6 after she killed Walter Frey to me indicates that her primary focus will be to finish her kill list as her conversations with Lady Crane indicate that after suffering tragic losses the most important thing on one's mind is the need for revenge which I certainly believe is her primary goal and focus and now that she has the skills uh, that are of the faceless assassin of the most feared and effective assassins in the world, it makes her a force to be reckoned with and her season 6 storyline completely relevant and necessary to the overall plot of the show. So that's it for my analysis on Arya's season 6 storyline. Be sure to check out my channel for many more Game of Thrones videos to come as I try to do at least one a week, as well as many more videos on shows like Star Trek, Mr. Robot, Dark Matter, and more. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. Thanks a lot for watching.